one of my teachers said that I should consider applying for Oxford or Cambridge, so I had a look at the courses and Classics and English really jumped out at me as a, one that would be really interesting. I thought about studying English on its own and Classics on its own, um, but just couldn't quite bring myself to fall on either side of the fence. One of the wonderful things about an English degree, um, and the English degree in Oxford in particular, is that uh, you start from that love of literature, but it borders on all kinds of different disciplines. The distinctive part about the Oxford Classics English course is that you don't really get a chance to specialise in one or the other, and that's the virtue of it. And so it's the way in which it links both subjects together that's the selling point. In the first year, uh, the English course, the English period course, which runs from 1550 to 1660, is specially designed for the Classics and English students because that's possibly the period when the most kind of vivid and intense engagement with the classical tradition was uh, crucial to the English literature. They've put a lot of effort into making the course, so there are these link papers um, which um, really set Oxford's course apart from other ones. English literature is really deeply imbued with thinking about the classics, with the influence of the classics, with imitation of classical forms and genres. Um, the Western literary tradition, in lots of respects, starts in Greece and Rome. This term, I'm doing tragedy in both classics and English. So I'm working on the tragedy link paper. Um, the first four weeks of term, we're working with my classics tutor on Greek tragedy and Seneca and looking at that and then moving on to English and the early modern period and seeing how classical tragedy feeds into English tragedy. There's an epic paper which is compulsory and um, other papers which some of them are based on genre, so there's a tragedy paper, a comedy paper and so on. In the last two years you only take two specifically English papers, and so you, you choose what's most interesting to you. You have a dissertation which you have to do which um, can focus on classics or English or combine the two. Um, I personally find that the, the joining the two is, is what's really interesting. I think I might be looking at the reception of classical literature in opera of the early 18th century. We encourage students who don't actually have either Latin or Greek to apply for the classics, uh, classics and English degree anyway. Um, students who are in that position um, take a four-year degree and the first year is devoted to bringing one of those languages up to a standard where you can read it and analyse literature in it. For classics there's an element of translation that isn't there with the English so that's something you have to factor in, reading the text in the original and figuring out what they mean. First year you have language classes so depending on what course you do there'll be between two and five hours a week. Classics English is an essay-based subject and so in a typical week I'd have anywhere from one to two essays and I'll spend a lot of time in the library. I find the lectures really helpful because they bring in a sort of another voice apart from just your tutors that you'll always be hearing, you get to hear um, other ideas um, and sometimes sort of professors will have just written a book and they'll give a lecture series um, covering those ideas so you're getting to hear brand new research. I got a scholarship from the Classics faculty to go to Greece this summer to go to classical sites, so I go to Athens and Corinth and Mycenae, um, kindly funded by the university. The Classics English course at Oxford is unique in the way in which it tries to link the two subjects together. Really, Oxford did seem to be the best place to study them both. Um, I mean, individually, it's got the biggest Classics faculty and the biggest English faculty in the UK, so that's, that's a pretty good <laughs> indication of um, how good they are on their individual subjects. There's a big tradition of doing classics at Oxford and the infrastructure's there and the expertise is here and here it doesn't feel as if you're doing an odd small subject. Everybody's doing it and there's six or seven classicists in my year alone at Oriel which is quite a small college. Tutors are also um, quite a valuable resource in that they've sort of sometimes literally written the book on your subject. We have our college library, which has a great classics section and English, and then we obviously have the separate faculty libraries and the Bodleian. One of the best things about teaching English in Oxford um, is that the tutorial system means that I spend hours of my week, every week, talking to interested and enthusiastic people about books. 
most of my tutorials are one to one, which is really nice because you get individual feedback for a whole hour on your essay, which can be slightly daunting. Having to engage that closely, it gives you nowhere to hide. You really need to know your stuff inside out. Your tutor will set you an essay title and maybe not really say much more about it. There'll be a title and there'll be a list of reading and you go away, think about it and come back. They might not even give you an essay question. You might have to think of that yourself. For each tutorial, you'll be given a reading list and sometimes the reading list is three or four pages long and you can't read all of that in a week. I guess it's taught me to just think a lot more for myself. So at school, you're taught and you learn what you're taught. And to a certain extent, you kind of regurgitate it. I think the emphasis is very much on independent thinking at Oxford. No one in my family had ever been to university or anything. It was all very much an adventure. Um, so I thought if I'm applying to uni, I might as well apply to Oxford. I thought it was one choice of five on my UCAS form and I might as well try because um, I really loved the look of the course um, and I came on an open day and it seemed really lovely but um, I, I still thought it was sort of a fairy tale and I wouldn't ever get in. The first question in my English interview was what books have you read recently and what do you want to talk to us about? When I'd been preparing for my interviews, not knowing what to think about, I'd been reading a lot of Greek epic and Greek tragedies, thinking, oh, I don't know any Greek, they'll probably ask me about that. And then they didn't. I wasn't asked about any classical literature. It was, they gave me an English poem to look at and analyse and come back to them with my thoughts. They want to see how you think um, and that you can think in a logical, proper way. The tutorial system means that a lot of teaching is is a conversation about literature and we need to be able to see that that's the kind of thing that you enjoy and that you will also benefit from. It's interesting to be asked what you think and get the impression that tutors really cared what you think. It's not a degree which is designed for people who have prior existing um, classical knowledge because it is possible to do the degree without having done Latin or Greek beforehand. Um, we test students' aptitude for learning the language um, at interview and admissions, but we encourage people who haven't studied uh, Latin or Greek languages um, to, to apply for a classics and English degree. We're looking for that independence of thinking um, that means that you don't just read for escapism, but you think about what you read and you're intellectually engaged with what you read. After next year when I finish the course, um, I would ideally I'd like to carry on studying, um, hopefully do a master's um, and maybe eventually go into academia, keep doing research. I'm tempted to continue the further study, maybe do a master's and see where it takes me because I've enjoyed the undergraduate experience so much that it would be nice to take it further. I know a lot of people sort of go into sort of semi-related careers like publishing and advertising and journalism and then other people just do jobs that aren't related to it. Um, it doesn't really close any doors.